Jesus went around the human intellect, the place of argument, and went directly for the person's conscience. That's the place of the knowledge of right and wrong. Now, the reason for this is because the Bible says that the sinful mind is at war with God. It is not subject to the law of God. It means it won't listen to it. So to be effective, we need to find a place of common ground where there is agreement with the law. And the place of common ground is the conscience. So we must first make contact with a person's conscience so that we can reason with them. Again, the sinful mind will not listen to the law of God. It will argue with it. But the conscience will agree with it. So we must take the law and use it to speak directly to a person's conscience. So how can we share the Ten Commandments as Jesus did with someone so they can see their need of God's forgiveness? Well, why don't we do it right now? Let's do it. We'll begin by asking you a question. Do you consider yourself to be a good person? They say, yeah, yeah, I'm a very good person. Well, let's ask a few questions using the commandments to see if that's true. Have you ever told a lie? Now, be honest. Ever told a fib, a white lie, a half-truth, or an exaggeration? You say, yeah, I've told one or two. So what does that make you? It makes you a liar. Have you ever stolen something, anything, even if it's small, irrespective of its value? Be honest, listen to the voice of your conscience. You say, yeah, yeah, I have taken things, just little things. Third commandment, you shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Have you ever used God's name as a cuss word to express disgust? That's called blasphemy. It's a very serious sin in the sight of God. Or listen to the seventh. You've heard it said by them of old, you shall not commit adultery. But listen to what Jesus said. But I say to you, whoever looks upon a woman to lust after her has committed adultery already with her in his heart. Have you ever done that? I mean, seriously, who hasn't? Well, if you said yes to those commandments and you, you violated them, then in God's sight, you're a lying, thieving, blasphemous adulterer at heart. And that's only four of the Ten Commandments. There's another six. And if you're found in your sins on the Day of Judgment, you'll be guilty, and the Bible says you'll end up in hell. What a terrible thought. The Bible says all liars will have their part in the lake of fire. No thief, no adulterer, no fornicator, no blasphemer will inherit God's kingdom. So what are you going to do? Well, this is where the good news of the gospel comes in. God sent forth his son, born of a woman, to die on the cross. When Jesus was on the cross, he was being bruised for our iniquities. He was paying the fine for the law that you and I had violated. The Bible puts it this way, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes on him should not perish but have everlasting life. That's what God offers you, everlasting life. So what should you do? Well, don't just confess your sins to God. Confess and forsake them. And don't just believe in Jesus. Put your trust in him as you trust a parachute. And the moment you do that, you'll pass from death unto life. So that's how we use the Ten Commandments to show someone that they need God's forgiveness. So let's cross now to Kirk and see him putting this into action. Would you consider yourself to be a good person? Yes. Do you, you try to do good things? Or what makes I try you... to, most of the time. I try to, but I'm only a human being. We all make mistakes. So what do you do to, what, what, what do you think makes you a good person? I try to treat everybody with respect and dignity. Yeah, that's good. Have you ever, um, do, you, do you, think that, uh, you think that God would consider you a good person? Because that's, yes. that's different, isn't it? You know, and you I think, think about God it like that. I think God would consider me a good person. All right, let me ask you. Um, have you kept the Ten Commandments? Yes, I, I try to every day. Every day I wake up in the morning, I try to keep the commandments every day. Okay, that's good. Um, have you ever told a lie? Because that's the Ninth Commandment, thou shalt not lie. Have you ever lied? Because I have lied. I see. have, Keith Shane, so From you time can be honest time, with me. Yes, I have. Okay, I so have what, what does that make you? That makes me a hypocrite. That's what that makes okay, me. Okay, a hypocrite, but also, even, even more specifically, if I told a lie, that'd make me a... If I, told, if I lied to you, you'd call me what? You call me a, begins with an L. Begins with the L. A liar. A liar. Right. So yeah. that makes you not just a hypocrite, but a... a liar. Right. All right. So have you ever stolen anything? Yes, I have. Okay. So what does that make you? 
Be honest. Okay. Here's the one that got me. Jesus said, um, uh, who, whoever looks upon a woman to lust after her has already committed adultery with in her his in heart. his heart. You've heard that. Have you ever done that? Looked at a woman with lust? Yes, I have. All right, so Keyshane, by your own admission, you are a lying thief and a hypocrite and an adulterer at heart. And you have to face God on Judgment Day. And that's good. You said you're thinking about spiritual things, but we've only looked at four of the Ten Commandments, three of the Ten Commandments, and... and, and uh, and you've broken all of them. So if God judged you by the Ten Commandments on the Day of Judgment, do you think you'd, you'd be innocent? Or do you think you'd be guilty? Be honest, just, just honestly, straight out. Honestly, I think I'll be guilty because of what I just said. I lie. I used. To, I mean, I lie from time to time. I no longer steal. I used to steal when I was younger, though. Yeah. Like all the time. So when you die, do you think that you'd go to heaven or hell in light of the fact that you, you've broken God's law all those times? I think I'll go to heaven. Why? Because back then I wasn't as educated about it now that I am now. So when you stand before God, are you hoping that He's going to look at your whole life and He sees all your sins, and you hoping He's going to overlook your sins because He's a good and forgiving God? I mean, He's pretty. I don't think He overlooked the sins. I don't think so. I don't so think if so. you're guilty and a, and a judge says I can't overlook your crimes, you're going to be punished. So you wouldn't be going to heaven. You'd be going to I'm hell. Going to hell. Does that concern you? Yes, it does. Because, man, you don't want to be wrong about that, thinking you're going to heaven if you're not. You know, I'm not even saying that because I care about you. I don't even know you, but I don't want to go to hell. I don't want you to go to hell. I don't want to go to hell either. So li listen to what the Bible says. The Bible says all liars will have their part in the lake of fire. It says, do not be deceived. No uh, thief and no adulterer will enter the kingdom of heaven. And you've already admitted to lying and to being a thief and an adulterer at heart. So, man, according to the Bible, if God gives you what you deserve, you're in big trouble, aren't you? Yes, I am. So what are you, what are you going to do when what you die gonna... and you stand before God? What are you going to say? How, how, what are you going to say to yourself? I can't really say much. Imagine you're in a courtroom and you're guilty of multiple crimes, okay? And say your, fi your fine is set at $50,000. And the judge says, Keyshane, you're guilty. All the evidence is here. Can you pay your fine? You say, no, I don't have any money. So you're being let off to your, to your prison. When all of a sudden, somebody you don't even know steps into the courtroom and says, judge, here's a check for $50,000. Keyshane is my friend, and I love him, and I'm paying his fine. So it's like this. God demonstrated his love for you in that while you broke the law, he paid your fine by sending Jesus to take your punishment for you. And he says that if you will repent of your sin and trust in Jesus to save you, that he will forgive you of your sin and grant you eternal life, not just because you're sorry, but because Jesus paid your fine and now he can let you go. Does that make sense? That makes sense. It makes a lot of Do sense. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, I comprehend what you're saying. Yeah, because there's nothing more important than your eternal salvation. So what you need to do before you go to sleep tonight, man, is get right with God. Just say, God, I'm sorry. I've sinned against you. Please forgive me. And this day I repent of my sin. It means I turn my back on sin and I put my trust in Jesus as my Lord and Savior. And then read your Bible. Do you have one? Yes, I do. And read it every day and obey what you read and God will never let you down. Hey, thanks for talking with me, Kishé. I wish you all the best. God bless this you. This happened for a reason. I think so, too. Happened for a reason. Right on, man. It's a wake-up call. Have a good day. You too. Wake up call. Well, time. You don't have to.